Got him. Got him. Yep. Gonna need a net. She's in there. Welcome to In The Spread. I'm Captain Chad Bryson, and today we're gonna to show you these guys. Uh, don't bite me. It's all gone. So this is why everybody always wants to know, this is why you tie Popovich style. Cause you can see, I mean, I just pulled this out of the fish's mouth and all my bucktail is standing straight up. It gives it a big profile in the water, big profile when it's wet. All of it's standing straight up just like that. That's what we want. Cause that's what fish like. Hey, welcome to In The Spread. I'm Captain Chad Bryson, and today we're gonna to show you some stuff about fly fishing for muskie. It's all the rage right now, uh, and it's a great fishery that's been around our area for a long time, and uh, it's just kind of been discovered over the last few years. A lot of wildlife resources agencies have done a lot to bring the fisheries back to fishable levels with, with big populations, and it's really not too far of a drive from anywhere that you live in the southeast, and so, I've been doing it for a while now and I really enjoy it. It's a lot of fun and so what I want to cover is my flies that I'm using, the rods, the reels, the lines, and basically everything about it so that if you want to try to get in this game, you can and uh, go into your local fly shop and be somewhat intelligent about what you need. So, so we're going to jump right into rods. and. Um, I'm gonna explain some of the things about the new rods. You know, there are certain things to look for that I look for in a muskie rod that you may not. You know, a lot of guys come to me as clients that, that wanna book a muskie trip with me and they've got a 10 weight or an 11 weight saltwater rod. 
which is fine and it will do the job and it'll get the job done but you know a lot of your saltwater rods are really fast they're like broomsticks there's a minimal amount of flex down into the middle part of it or even into the butt you know like this one this is an old im6 graphite 10 weight rod it's bulletproof i've carried this thing around for god probably 10 years now and it's a good tough stick and it gets the job done it's durable it takes a beating it's not the most fun thing to cast but it will get the job done and it doesn't cost a lot of money so what you get and what i what, what you're getting for your money and what i look for in a musky rod the sage musky rod is this one and what i found with these rods is that they will bend a little bit all the way down into the butt section and what you get with that is a little bit more forgiveness on your cast because at the end of the day you're throwing a 400 grain sinking line and these guys and stuff that's even bigger and you know it's not easy it's hard and so if you're going to do this this part of the game you want to make it as easy on yourself as, as you can possibly make it because you're you're inherently going and casting flies to fish that just simply don't want to eat or they eat whenever they get good and damn ready to eat so casting a whole lot throughout the course of the day a rod that weighs a little bit less makes a huge difference and you know, I'm using the Lamson Speedster reels just because it's a super large arbor. And most of the time when you get a musky bite, it's right there at the boat. You're doing your figure eight. You got a pile of fly line at your feet and a musky eats and it's right there. And then it wants to run a little bit and you got this pile of fly line you got to deal with. So a larger arbor reel really makes a big difference because it picks up more line from your feet so that you can get the fish on the drag faster. So. There's a lot of good options out there. I know Scott makes a great musky rod right now. Reddington in the Predator series even has a nice musky rod for a significantly less money than the Sage musky rod is. Um, but you know, there again, you're talking about qualities of graphite, how light is the rod versus how heavy. And it's simply one of those things that with musky fishing, I would spend as much money as I could afford to spend on the rod and then maybe reduce a little bit on the reel because muskie aren't really known for being big drag pullers, you know, like a tarpon or a permit or something like that. They're gonna pull, they're gonna fight, but it's not super critical to have a T-bore reel to fight muskie with, even though that's super cool. Um, but you can look at any of my stuff and I've got a wide variety of reels. I got sage reels, I got old Nautilus reel, but all of that stuff works. Spend the money on the rod, skimp on the reel. Secondly, moving right into lines. This isn't a sport or a part of the fly fishing sport where you can go into your fly shop and say, hey, I need a musky line. Give me one musky line. Because I guarantee you any shop that you go in that the guy knows about musky fishing, he's gonna look at you like you got seven heads. It's not a one fly line game. You gotta come in, you gotta be prepared, you gotta be willing to invest into this part of the sport. And so if I was just gonna pick one line, it would probably be a 400 grain sinking tip, just like this one, because this is the most useful. I wind up using this one most of the time, but there are other applications where I need something more. I need something a little heavier, and it's, it's either a bigger fly that I gotta get down deeper, or it's that one section of the river where I know it's got a big, deep curved shelf with lots of rock in the bottom, and I gotta get the fly down quick. So when that's the case, I'm using a T14 outbound line by Rio. This is actually a striper line, but it still works for muskie just fine. This is the heaviest sinking fly line that Rob and I have found thus far, and it gets it done. So this would be my second choice. And then last is what most of the guys in the Great Lakes area, you know, like Minnesota, Wisconsin, you know, your true musky guys from up north, most of those guys are using this intermediate line because they're only fishing in lakes or very slow moving rivers, or they're not having to get their flies down very deep. This line's great, I use it. I got it spooled up on one of my reels right now. It's a very minimal application specific for me here in the Southeast, but it does have a place. But this will be the last line I would buy. But these three would be the ones that I would do with the 400 grain Rio being first, the T14 being second, and the intermediate being third. 
you can tie this huge, big, nasty conglomeration of stuff and it's probably gonna work. But there's a few features that I've discovered and some other guides around the country have discovered too that really work and they're critical features and I wanna cover some of that with you. Um, the, your standard musky fly tied on one single hook is gonna be like this one. And you can see here we just got one nice big seven aught hook, super sharp, and some big long slapping feathers, some bucktail, some flash, it's not a complicated tie, it's actually pretty simple. And in regards to the action of this fly, you're depending on all of the feathers to do the action and create the action for you. And these feathers will make a swimming motion. And so when I use this fly, I'm basically just jigging is all I'm doing. It's swimming and jigging, swimming and jigging. There's no, no turns like a T-bone or a hang time. It's just swimming and jigging is all this fly does. And so. I find that sometimes in high pressured musky waters, where it's get, where the, you know, if it's a weekend, if it's a Sunday, if that's the only day you've got to fish and it's a Sunday and you wanna go out and fish and there's like 20 boats ahead of you, everybody that musky fishes knows that just because 20 boats went ahead of you doesn't mean that you're not gonna stick a fish behind them because musky eat when they damn well get good and ready to. So, uh, but this is a fly that I'll use in that situation and it's just a really simple tie with bucktail flash and some slapping feathers and a variety of colors depending on water, water color and density. I don't even have a name for it. I don't, probably doesn't even need a name. It's just a really simple fly, but I find that it works in a variety of situations. So, moving back just a little bit, you know, primarily for a long time, I was a trophy brown trout guide, and that was all I did. And pretty good at it, you know, as, as good as anybody, I guess. But people kept coming to me and they would see my brown trout flies and say, oh man, where are you fishing musky? And I'm like, I'm not fishing musky, I'm fishing brown trout. And they're like, oh no, those are musky flies. And so on a whim, I took a brown trout fly and went musky fishing and I really kind of didn't have a clue what I was doing, so to speak. I mean, I'd been musky fishing a little bit, but I didn't really know a whole lot. And so the way I went about it was I just went brown trout fishing with my brown trout flies on a musky rod and some wire leader. And it was, this fly was really my first musky fly. It's called the Buzzkill. And it started out as a brown trout fly and wound up being a kick-ass musky fly. It's triple articulated has a whole lot of action in the water. It's not unlike some of the hang times or T-bones out there, um, but it gets a lot of great action. And what I've found to be the most critical factor in making these flies is the quality of bucktail. And I cover that in a lot of my trophy brown trout videos that are also available at In The Spread uh, about how to select the quality of bucktail and, you know, and everything. And, and now, a year later, I've also found how critical, even more critical it is to be selective with your materials for musky flies. And so we're gonna go ahead and cover that. Um, we're gonna cover that in one of the other videos. After I had a lot of success with my brown trout flies musky fishing, I came back, came back to Atlanta feeling really good about myself. And so I go to my buddy Rob Smith and we have this in-depth discussion about musky flies and he proceeded to tell me that how I really was just kind of more lucky than good about stuff and, and explained to me about bucktails and you know a few more things. And so honestly, he really helped me along and uh, he's gonna be a part of this musky deal with us at In The Spread and you'll, you'll see him here in a little bit. But um, after that in-depth discussion with Rob, I, I really upped my game and uh, spent hundreds and hundreds of dollars on nice northern bucktail that make nice long tight flies with nice big features and some big slapping feathers and so then it escalated to this guy you know with the with a little bit of a deer hair head and these guys get a lot of good action side to side action as well as up and down and so after i did those i, I did some more research and discussions and beat downs and everything else and finally ultimately decided that triple articulated with a nice big fat head on the front of it swims the best has the best action and catches the most fish for me doesn't make it right for everybody it's just what works for me 
And so that's what I have decided is this one. And we haven't done the video, the fly time video for this one yet, but it's been efficiently named the Alien Bastard, which is probably about right. So, um, but if you don't want to tie your own flies and you're just kind of getting started, you got a nine weight rod and you just want to give this a go. You know, you just want to try it because it's all the rage and everybody's talking about it and it seems like a good thing. Any reputable fly shop around the country, anywhere in musky country, is gonna have some pre-made flies that you can walk in and buy. And they're actually pretty good. Rob and I searched high and low to try and find some decent patterns that we could just hang on the shelf that somebody can come in and pay for. And you know, you can see they're not cheap. I mean, they're 20 bucks a piece at retail, but I can promise you I'm not selling those for 20 bucks a piece. So if you wanna just get started for 100 bucks and get yourself five flies, you can. So we're gonna cover leaders on this portion too. We talked about rods, reels, fly lines, flies. And we're gonna talk about leaders. And you know, a lot of the old timers will, will say that you have to use a, a wire leader. And in a lot of cases that's true. And in years past, all we had really was just a, you know, wire leader with a barrel swivel at one end and a snap swivel at the other. And that was the way you attached everything. And it, it certainly did work. Uh, but now, thanks to modern technology, we've got a whole lot of other options to use. One of the, one of the greatest options now is Seaguar, a Braze X, 100 pound fluorocarbon. And you can use 100 pound fluorocarbon. You can probably even get away with 80 pound fluorocarbon and tie it straight to your flies or straight to your plugs, your gear, whatever you're using, and it would be fine. And you know, here again, any reputable fly shop is gonna have this sort of leader material for your musky rigs. I use it, Rob uses it, everybody I know that's any good uses it, and it's, it's a little bit easier to deal with than the wire, uh, especially the old, you know, seven strand wire where you got all of this stuff that you gotta deal with just to put it together. But when I don't wanna use that, when I really want a thin diameter, you know, to fish that may be kind of picky or pressured, I'll use some sort of a, a butt section like this. This is just 50 pound fluorocarbon butt section. I'll use this in about a two, maybe a three foot piece. And then Rio makes wire bite that's actually knottable wire, which means you can tie this stuff in a knot. You use a standard surgeon's knot, just like you would on any other knot attaching tippet to leader or, or anything else you use. I use this, I do the surgeon's knot attaching it to my 50 pound butt, butt section, and then I tie a loop knot into my flies on the end. I think you can probably even see where this one's had the loop knot tied into it that I cut off, but it's a good product, easy to work with, a little bit thinner diameter, doesn't kill any of the action on your flies, works great, easy to use, and not too terribly expensive. So, so that's it, that's what I've been using, no secrets. Um, not really one to keep a whole lot of secrets in the fishing world because there really aren't any left thanks to Google Earth but uh, and the book face. But um, anyway, hope you enjoyed that. I hope it was helpful and you can always contact me at In The Spread uh, or any of the guys at In The Spread and we'll be happy to answer any questions that you got. Thanks a lot.